one thing about TED Talks is that they kind of like start their editing with like there's already people clapping and then they just like start and it's like you're already th they already like you. So I was wondering if everybody could do that. So just like <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. So I'm John and today I am going to talk about Twitter bots. Um, and by the end of today, you will know how to make a Twitter bot on your own. So first question, what is a bot? Um, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is an example of a bot that literally just tweets another number every 36 seconds. Um, it's around 1.6 million right now. Um, and that's really all there is to that one. But you can do more stuff with the format. Um, but fundamentally, okay, a bot is one, the same joke, like an arbitrary number of times. So for any sketch comedians, maybe you're probably into this. Um, a joke that takes a comparatively long time to make compared with like a regular joke that you just say with your mouth. Um, and it's a joke that pollutes the digital environment with tons of junk garbage data, which is a noble goal in my opinion. Um, yeah, so here's some examples of Twitter bots. Uh, this one is called Two Headlines, and it basically just mashes any random two headlines up. Um, here's another one. It, this one is seeded very well. Um, it comes up with just these kind of stories. I was really into Neil Gaiman in high school, so maybe this one is just like a personal kind of pet thing. But they're just weird, and they come up with these fascinating stories, in my opinion. Um, I would see any of these movies before, like, any of the movies that exist. Um, wow, so Portland. Uh, this is one that pulls the Google Maps API and takes a random picture from Portland and <laughs> comments on how Portland is just kind of a place like any other. Um, the worst versus the worst. This one was made by Rob, Dubbin, Rob Dubbin, one of the Colbert writers, which makes a lot of sense because he's basically word jokes. Um, this does a swir search on a Twitter API. It searches for uh, what people have written as blank is the worst. So, it, and it'll just take anything and then kind of interpolate it as blank versus blank. So. I don't know, can I get a show of hands? Who thinks cheap wine and spilled cake at a wedding is the worst of these two? Um, and who thinks coming to the realization that you've lost sight of your true self? Okay. All right. <laughs> I, I get along with you people. Um, here is another example. This is a bot that downloads an image and reduces the JPEG quality 100 times and it just keeps rewriting that file. And then, so this is a lizard um, after 100 iterations of that. Um, yeah, it looks nice. Uh, so say you want to make a Twitter bot, what actually goes into this thing? Um, and that's up to you. Um, this is uh, an idiosyncrasy of whatever bot that you're trying to make. Um, the thing that you have to, the kind of the mindset that you have to get into is that what you're creating is a possibility space. Um, so this is an example of John Cage's aleatoric music. Um, I don't know how to read this. I don't think anybody does. But that's the idea of what you're going to make is not, there's going to be some noise in the signal. And so that's what you have to take account. Um, the main source of, of what a lot of these things are is public APIs. Uh, APIs stands for other people's computers. Um, it's just, this is, there's so much just public data all over the place that you can play with. Like, th it's just out there. Um, there is, for example, there's these marketplaces that kind of aggregate a lot of them. There's, you know, there's free ones, there's freemium ones where if you kind of go over a certain number of requests per day, um, they'll start charging you like a fraction of a penny. You're not going to do that if you're making a Twitter bot. Um, Google's got a ton of them. Weather, Yelp, like there's lots of geo interesting ones. This one is the number of humans in space API. Um, it takes a while to load because it has to go to space <laughs> and find all the people. 
Um, I'll let that. I'll let that. I'll let that run. Um, so how do we talk with these public APIs? So first, we're just going to work with the request promise module. It's extremely simple. Uh, it's just a promiseified module called request. And another thing we're going to be working with today is the FS module. Now, the FS module is a way for you to interact with your file system. So that would be, for example, if you wanted to make something like this. So this is a Twitter bot called Every Word. It just tweeted every word in the English language over the course of about seven years. Um, so if you wanted, so like, if you wanted to know, if you wanted your program to know what the next word was, you would use uh, an FS. And I made an every word clone that I can show you an example of this. Oh, yeah. Let's open that folder. OK, so we've got our bot. Um, you have to make this extension so that it knows about text files. And oh, another thing about bots. Okay, so this right here is your consumer key, your consumer secret, and access and token and secret. Uh, this is how your Twitter uh, module, which we're going to go into later, knows uh, who you are. This is what identifies you as whatever account that you are. You can just go to apps.twitter.com, set this up. It'll it'll uh, square all that up. Um, yeah, so here's an easy way to do this. Uh, once you tweet, once you set up your tweet, what you can do is write to an index file. So like, all you do is put this number out here and increment it, and it's super simple. So today, we are going to go through a slightly more complicated bot. Today's bot will be interpolating Dark Souls message templates with old Magic the Gathering cards, because that's the kind of person that I am. <laughs> um, yeah, it just, it, uh, oh, okay. Um, so the way, the reason that it kind of works is partially because, okay, it's, when you're thinking about, okay, what's the data that I'm going to come, what's going to come out of this? Um, this is very endemic to string interpolation. So Dark Souls has a mechanic wherein you can leave a message for other players um, and it uses templates because they know what people are like. Um, so if you open this menu, you select something from here, try, and then it, you can fill that template with one of these things like um, Sorrow, apparently. Um, so then other people in the game would get there and see your message and know to try Sorrow. Um, the Magic Cards things shows up, it works pretty neatly because you tend to know what you're going to get um, in terms of uh, language type. So you know that, okay, if you have a creature card, then it's likely to be a noun. And if you get a verb card, it is likely to be a verb. Um, the game is set up so that they tend to conform to those language types. So once you've got this data, how do you organize it? So this is, uh, these are some decisions that, are, that you're going to have to make when you make this bot. One way of doing it is a Markov chain. Um, so Markov chains, what they do is, is take a seed and then construct a way of weighting what word comes after what other word so that it kind of makes this uncanny speech um, output. Uh, they were originally made to uh, like avoid spam filters. Um, but they can be a lot of, like they're kind of a mainstay in terms of Twitter bots. Um, so depending on what you pick as your seed, you can come up with some pretty cool results. Here's one of my favorites. Uh, this is one where the seed is tech recruiter emails and Arrowhead trip reports. Um, it's a really good account. Um, yeah, so instead of uh, having kind of pure string generation, uh, what we're going to do is interpolate with templates uh, pretty manually. This timed out. 
space is big. Um, okay. Oh, here's that. So I'm just going to show an example of this little function. Um, it's very simple. Uh, and you can just Google this. I didn't make this. Um, the way it works is, okay, you give it uh, an object where you tell what you want. Uh, so it knows here, okay, replace this segment of the string with whatever you give this object here. So what you get out of that is the elephant drank from the lake. Easy. So that's um, a tool that you have at your disposal. And if you just want to work on pure string interpolation, um, there is a website that is dedicated just to that um, called Cheap Bots Done Quick. It's very easy to use. Um, you can't use any API stuff. It has to be very self-contained. Um, but it's fun. And like, I actually made one like, like a year ago before, uh, before any of this full stack stuff. So the other major tool that we're going to use in terms of string interpolation is called Rita. So now Rita is a big library, and what it does is um, analyzes one of the things it does. Because as you can see over here, there are a lot of functions here. And what it does is uh, analyze, it analyzes phrases and gives you like here's what type of word that is. It can also give you like, here's what would be emphasized in if this was being spoken. And what it, and a, a, a thing to know about it is that it actually takes in uh, entire phrases and analyzes them. Um, so for example, look at this word cheat here. So cheat can be a noun or a verb, but if we were to run this, okay, so as you can see, Here's how uh, it would output. Um, don't cheat on tests. OK, it knows that that's a verb here. My nemesis, Gary, is a cheat. It knows that that's a noun. Something to know. Um, so what Rita actually does is let you control the kinds of phrases that you use. Um, so if you remember that uh, worst versus worst account, so now this is a kind of bot where you actually want a pretty limited number of phrases uh, or limited structures of phrases. So what you can do, and I will show you a sort of clone that I made of this. I made best versus the best um, as, a kind of, as a way to kind of clone this. <coughs> so what you can do is this just takes a lot of trial and error and logic to say, OK, I don't want this phrase to end with a determinant, which is like a word like the word this. Um, because people tend to write this is the best or this is the worst a lot. And that's not really constructive um, when you're trying to make this bot. So you can also say like, OK, I want it to start with this kind of word. I want it to end with this kind of word. Um, it lets you uh, narrow down uh, the noise. You're trying to get good data, and there's a lot of noise. And this is a tool that lets you uh, filter out. Um, yeah, that's, that's good. Um, nope. This one. OK. Uh, another cool, a couple of other cool things that it can do is uh, you can pluralize your nouns, and you can adjust your verb tense. So you might want to do that, A, if you, um, uh, if you pluralize your nouns kind of randomly, then it just creates a bigger possibility space. Um, verb tense adjustment, you can do that um, in order to just uh, select your data more effectively. So who wants to generate a tweet right now? All right, this is going to be a really good joke, guys. Uh, which one of these? OK, so here is that account. We are going to have a tweet right now. Whoop. All right, Windows button not working. 
All right, node bot, let's do this. So what it does is creates this thing. Um, so here's the output. And then the twit library handles this very effectively for you. It's really just boiler, boilerplate. Let's see what it made. Oh man, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's a really good joke. Let's see another one. Good tip. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's try generating some more. Whoop. That's. <laughs> Um, all right, I have to stop, I guess. Um, but thank you for letting me talk to you about Twitter bots.